<laughs> Yo, good, 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 good. Hey, man. Happy, happy new year. Happy new year. My voice is still going a little bit, but. Oh, yeah, you were a little. <laughs> yeah, hey, bro. I was, I was a flimmy like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> flimmy <been> flim- <laughs> Yeah, every time I come home from Atlanta, bro, I swear to God, bro, I don't know what it is. I don't know what Weather it is. Weather change, probably. Yeah, you know. probably, probably. Um, hey, okay. man, episode whatever the fuck we at. No, I think it's episode 58. Hey. I'm pretty sure it's 58. Um, man's playing podcast. Tim Boo in the building, man. You had a good new year? Yeah, man. It was dope. Yeah. It was all right. It was all right. It was fun. Okay. It was cool. It was cool. Uh, mo- mostly it was just like, it was just, I could just rest, bro. Hey, bro. That's, that's the same thing. Hey, not the- drive and just rest. Exactly. I let Haley drive the whole time we were watching. <laughs> I didn't touch the steering wheel. Touch I, was- the- <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to look at I a steering wheel. Passenger wind. prints the whole time. Man. Passenger just prints. Just sitting there like, oh, can we go to Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> we switching roles in that moment. Exactly. Exactly, <laughs> dog. Yeah, bro. I was I was butt naked for three days, dog, in Chrissy's room. <laughs> <laughs> but naked nigga like not even that's not a joke that's not even a joke three days Balls nigga no on, no man. clothes on bro no clothes on that's how comfortable i was that's that's comfortable got up took a shower how right back in that motherfucking bed butt ass nigga dog no. <laughs> <laughs> dry off in the dry bed. off, dry <laughs> off in the bed. don't worry the sheets will dry me yeah, off yeah nigga dude i don't know man but yeah i was yeah man i had a great time too got to rest got to see family of course yeah um, yeah, man, it was a great, it was a great, um, uh, great thing. Do you got any New Year's resolutions? I've been asked that like 50 times bro, on I the road. I don't though. Not this year. Not this year? Nah, I'm just, bro, I'm just trying to make it this year. <laughs> I'm trying not to be an NPC like last year. <laughs> trying not to be, <laughs> last trying, year to, trying to move NPC up, be a, a main character mode. Yeah, yeah, last year I was just like, oh, okay, go to work. <laughs> yeah, go to work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's it, nigga. Exactly. So. Really, I know. Do you? Hell no. I, I haven't had uh, New Year's resolutions for Years, decades, yeah. actually. I right. stopped. I stopped giving them bitches out. <laughs> I don't hit them. <laughs> so <laughs> usually it's like a, either a weight. It, for most people, it's a weight loss thing and a money thing. Yeah, and stuff like that. You know. And then what's crazy is, bro. I really like, and that's why I said decades ago I stopped doing them because, like, yeah, there are things that I want, but like honestly, I just get them just by doing it. Like, I don't really set a goal. I just go out and just. Yeah, it could happen January fifth or, or March thirteenth. Yeah, like, bro. You don't know. Unless it's something like little, like oh yeah, I want to save up like two hundred dollars or something. Then I'll give myself a plan. But like, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't really do that. But uh, let's let's hop into the story of of the year. But first, before I start, I just remembered that um, I do want to say. Uh, uh, there's a YouTube channel called The Daily Rap Crew. Um, they surfaced over COVID, I believe, and uh, one of their members passed away coming into the new year. I think it's Jew, and if I said that name wrong, y'all can correct me in the comments, but um, Jew has uh, passed away. He um, actually died to gun violence from what I picked out from the post that The Daily Rap Crew put out there, um, and he left behind four children, so... I did want to say um, sorry for y'all loss. I know it's a terrible time, man. Um, you know, and uh, God bless them. And I hope I hope and pray for Jews' family as well. Um, you know, I've checked out some of their content. You know, it's if ands, or buts. Like, it's up in the air. But, you know, none of that really matters right now. But I did want to say that. I did want to say rest in peace to Jew. And um, I hope that the Daily Rap crew is doing okay and in good spirits. So, um Let's get into Cat Williams, big dog. Let's get into Cat Williams, bro. Man, cat, 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 on took a, cat, cat took over TikTok. Yeah, bro. Cat took over TikTok, man. You seen the whole was, interview. Bro, I think it was 8 million in 22 hours on YouTube. That's what they did. The 8, 8 million, million views. views. Ooh. Yes. Woo, woo. <laughs> Shit. It's in 24 hours. Damn. <laughs> Damn, Shay Shay. Um, uh, hey, um, um, Uncle I'm going, Shay Shay. hey, Uncle is the one thing I would say about Shannon Sharp, man. Shannon Sharp is is a genius. He's professional, yeah, he's, articulate. He's a guy. I, you know, hey man, listen, you know, I'm glad it's him. I'm gonna say it like that. I'm glad it's him. Yeah. Um, you said you watched it for two. You watched? I watched it? the whole thing. I said well, how, what at was, first I watched just first I was just like okay, let me just turn it on. But then he just off the top. Went crazy for the first 30 minutes, and I was hooked. Since then, I was like, all right, cat. Well, what yeah. else you got? <laughs> yeah. Shit, who else doing shit? Yeah. You know, but like we said, bro, like, 
it was stuff we some stuff we haven't heard, but mm-hmm. some stuff was new. Like to me, I didn't know that there was supposed to be a rape scene. Like that was my money. Mike was supposed to get raped rape. in that scene. Yeah, you know, and then mm-hmm. that you know Ricky Smiley would have took that role. You yeah, know? he's like, I'll, 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 I'll get raped. It's cool, rape me. That's crazy. And Cal's like, no, um, um we don't have to do don't that. To. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to. Which is dope. To yeah, actually, like, and it was for that to be his first movie, mm-hmm. and he was just like, had the balls to be like, yo. I'm not getting tapped. Can we tapped. not? Yeah. Like, can, can we, we not? not do, black yeah. Can we movie? not do that? Can we not do that? That's. I think that's funny too. Um. I think everybody's talking about the dress situations and stuff. And yeah. Um. You know, I kind of have like a different take on the dress situations, but just based off of like now, like because I actually had to sit there and think about it and stuff like that. And and I I think about like and and if you don't know and if you hadn't seen. Um, he talks about, you know, all the guys that have worn a dress from, like, Chris Tucker to um, um, Martin Ricky Smiley, Martin Lawrence, all of them and things like that. Terry, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry and all that stuff. And um, I just think I, – I, I look at it like this, man. Like, I don't think that they're they're making them I, – I, I look at it like this. There's the long way around, and then there's the shortcut. That's the way I see it. Mm. And some of these guys, just like you talk about Ricky Smiley, right – they want that success so fast or they want it so bad that they'll do whatever to yeah. get that success. Willing to do whatever, They're right? willing to do whatever to do get that success. And then there are some men that took the long way around. For me, Morris Chestnut has I have not seen that man address. No. Okay. I haven't seen we haven't talked about Denzel. Terrence Howard. We haven't seen um Chad with Bozeman, rest in peace. Yeah, you Chad haven't seen him in a dress. No. You haven't seen you either, you haven't even seen Michael B. Jordan in a dress. You get what I'm saying? I don't think I've ever seen him in a dress. I don't think I've seen Michael B in a dress. Okay, so, and you look at it, they did make it to a certain point. They're up there. And you go look at their history. Just go look at, like, some of the interviews when they talk about, like, coming up and what it took to come up and stuff like that. They they took the long way around. And, you know, some of these guys like Ricky Smiley, some of these guys like Martin Lawrence, they kind of just like. Bro, you know what that is, I think? I think it's just that's top-tier talent. That you sure. don't have to wear a dress. Denzel yeah. don't got to wear a dress. Yeah. Like, we listen to what Denzel's, the producers be like, all right, whatever you want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even early in their career, mm-hmm. they could have done that. But they didn't, mm-hmm. you know, they didn't cho- choose that route. So yeah. it's like people like lower level, like kind of like Ricky Smiley, who's not yeah. like a Terrence Howard, Denzel kind of person. You think it, like, he's like, I got to wear I got to do whatever. Because I got to do whatever. <laughs> I got to break in. I got to break in. This I place. got the name and I'm right there. Yeah. I just got to do something. So if I got to get tapped by Terrence Cruz, uh, by Terry Cruz, mm-hmm. Which would probably hurt. <laughs> then, like you know, I'll do it. You know, so I ain't I getting think... tapped by Terry Crews, big ass. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you, big dog. I'm not doing it either, bro. Honestly, I would have seen him, and I would have said, I don't know about this, fellas. Um, <laughs> that bathroom scene makes me uncomfortable already. So yeah, to add a rape scene would have been kind of crazy. Yeah, exactly. I already get uncomfortable watching that nigga like yeah. squirm around and shit. I'm like, oh man. And so my dad didn't tell me why. So there's a part in the scene where like. Um, Damien takes the the phone books out of his uh, like his jacket. Yeah. So I ain't gonna pants. hold you. I didn't know what that meant. I thought that was like him holding his shit down, like him holding his dick down. It's <laughs> I thought that was my dad. My dad wears corrections, and so do that in jail. like I thought that he was. I was like, is he trying to hold his dick down? <laughs> he trying to like hide his like shit. And uh, no, nah, he was like, no, nigga, they they wear that so you know if they get stabbed or something like yeah. that, they'll go through the phone book mm-hmm. and they'll you know do less damage or no damage. So I was like, oh okay. I was <laughs> like, damn, is he holding his dick down? I li- I swear to God, as a young kid, bro, I was like, what the fuck phone? is he doing? Yeah, bro, he had like four, three. No, on you're phone. right though, bro. When I first seen it as a younger, I was like, what the fuck are the phone books? <laughs> yeah, for? So I yeah, I was I was confused in the motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> okay. I was like, all right, bro. Um, but yeah, man, you know. Um, I I appreciate Cat Williams. A lot of y'all are just learning this stuff because the internet's catching up. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it, it was even parts where he was talking about, like, stealing jokes and stuff like that. Right. Right? right. And that's a no-no for a comedian. Comedians cannot steal jokes. Yeah, yeah. Stealing jokes is a no-no. No. Um, I thought that was crazy. Um, and then, like, all the responses to that was crazy as well, too. Yeah. But we knew Steve Harvey was was Steve Harvey. But I never yeah. thought Steve Harvey was like super funny like that. I didn't think he was funny, but I also knew he was kind of cutthroat too because like back in the day like they, that's what they, they talked about on the radio like him beefing with like Bernie Mac. So, you yeah. know, I'm from Atlanta, so like in Atlanta you they heard about it. You all heard the beefs yeah. be- 
because like Wanda Smith, you know the woman oh, that, that yeah, the Wanda Smith was a big time like you know she would bring on all the comedians and stuff yeah. and stuff, and they would discuss it. So um, you know, hey man, a lot of them discuss like the beefs was going on in the backwoods. It's like. I've been knew half this shit. You know what I mean? The rest of peace to Bernie Mac. I always thought he was one of the greatest. Oh, he's the funniest. Yeah, man. Out of the and kings of comedy. That's he's the king. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. say. Yeah, he's definitely the king. <laughs> I see why, like Steve Harvey became. You know, he started become like the host. Yeah. You know, because I mean, that might be his talent. He's yeah. good at hosting. He's good at like you know just commentary type shit. Mm-hmm. Like he is, but like stand up to stand up pound for pound. Oh, hell man. no, hell no. He wouldn't have had no career. <laughs> no. I didn't think he was that funny either. And said too, like, it, and this is just from an honest place. Like, sure, we love these people because like they are people. Yeah, and they, like, we they're, grew up they're watching longevity. These yep. But like, were they at the it, now as a grown man? Were they are they looking really back, that funny? It's yeah, like, no, back, said was not that funny. To it's, me. it's looking like like you know in the NBA, for example, like you know how we do sports and shit like that. You know, once they retire or once their yeah. career goes to a certain place, we get to go back and look, look and at say, the film. Yeah, look, let's at, look the film. at the film. Yeah, you know what I mean. We go back and we call Michael Jordan the goat because we see the film. He's nigga. still the goat. That nigga the goat. Like you know what I'm saying. Six part documentary. On yeah, you know he's the still the goat. Unfortunately, but like. You know, now you go back, you look at, you know, Sed and all them. And I love Cedric. John Cena Vacation is my favorite, one of my Good favorite movie. movies. Great movie. Great movie. Hilarious. I don't know. I can't tell you one Cedric the Entertainer joke. I don't I know. I can't either. I can't. I can't, I can't put my finger on it, bro. Then he's, he's came out sitting like a walrus. <laughs> 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 oh, man. And Just sitting there like, bro, but if you go back to Cat Williams' first shit, oh, you're cracking up from the jump. Yeah. You can go back right now and watch mm-hmm. that shit. The Pimp in a, bro, uh, what? Pimp Chronicles. Yeah. Pimp Chronicles? Mm-hmm. You'll laugh your ass off right yeah. now. That yeah, shit's funny that shit right funny. now. Yeah, it's bro. funny as fuck. Cat has always been It's, it's one joke I love Cat Williams did when he did with his kid. I'm probably going to do it with my kid. It was, uh, it was like the Xbox or PlayStation <laughs> joke where yeah. he's like, my kid wants like the new game system and shit. And he's like, I could get you this new game system, but I can get you this old game system. And they come with four games. Yeah. <laughs> Two controllers. Two, control- Two memory cards. cards. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, bro, that shit is always funny to me. That shit is always, that shit will always make me laugh and I'm definitely gonna do that to my child um, <laughs> exactly bro you don't need the Playstation 10 You we, got, we can get the PS3 yeah we get a PS3 get and come games. with 20 games <laughs> and 2 controllers <laughs> and you can play with that bitch all night you know <laughs> <laughs> so I get it man and I also I want to say it like this too man um, cause Cat Williams the, because I got to see Cat Williams over his career I I do, and this is going to be a, a, like the take that everybody's going to hate. I there's partly that I do blame on Cat Williams. There's partly I do blame on the industry. The part that I do blame on the industry is that y'all bring these niggas in, and you sell them this dream and all this stuff, and then you use them up and then you throw them aside, and then when it comes back, you can't give them their flowers. Right. And that's what Cat Williams. I feel that was the only message I got out of two hours was that you watch all these niggas take. You watch them suck you dry and all that stuff, and they're not giving back to the youth. I honestly think that's why we don't have great comedians now, like mm-hmm. these great comedians. Like, name a name a, a guy who's like a great, great comedian. I love Drewski. Yeah. I love Jess you, Hilarious. About new Age. New Age. None of them uh, niggas. Yeah. Well, you put them in a ring with, like, even Martin Lawrence, someone that's, like, low tier is, like, right. Martin Lawrence. Right. You're not beating these niggas in Chris comedy. Chris Rock and shit. Chris, Chris Rock, Tucker. you're not beating Chris Rock. You feel what I'm saying? Bro, he so, said about, now we got Epstein Island, Chris Tucker. I said, oh, oh man. man. Epstein Island, Chris Tucker. Was he on the list? We're going to talk about that, too. We're going to talk about that list. That's that just list crazy. Is you know, I've seen so many of them, too, so you got to watch out for that shit. I've seen so many different ones. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, like, I understand why Cat is is so and that too. Like y'all niggas keep saying he not mad. That nigga is pissed. He's bitter. He is. I understand, but it is. Oh, it's. I just had this friend. But he's uh, okay conversation. With it, I just had this conversation with my friend Kenya. It is okay to be pissed. Oh, yeah. It's okay to be mad, mm-hmm. especially when everybody fist fucking you, mm-hmm. and people are taking over certain spaces that you know they don't they don't deserve. Right. Like they don't. Come on, my nigga. Like. I like I said, I grew up on Steve Harvey, bro. I love the Steve Harvey show. Right. Never thought that family nigga feud. was a uh, <laughs> yeah. Love Family Feud. Never thought this nigga was a king of comedy. I never in my life thought that nigga back then was a king of comedy. To me, it should be Dave Chappelle should be in there. Oh yeah. 
They you know what I'm saying? There, sure. To me, yeah, Cat Williams should be Cat in there. Williams. DL Hughley deserves his spot. I always right. thought DL Hughley was was funny. He was he's what the new age should be mm-hmm. type of type of comedy. Right. And Bernie you, was up there. Bernie, yeah, go. You know what I'm saying? So, so what, what I would get you, it, bro. What would you say about um? What would you say about Martin Lawrence? Martin Lou, Lawrence Lou is there? nah, not a king of comedy. Mm. And I love Martin. I, know, I think I that his most. Most of his impact was on TV as as the True. shows. Martin, sure, his yeah. impact. I'm not talking about his comedy. I don't think that he's a bad comic. Mm. I just think that comedy wise, he was not top tier in my opinion. He right. just was not. Bro, and I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> bro, he took me back when he said uh, Comic View. Yeah, Comic View, bro. <laughs> and that and that's what. And a lot of people really probably don't even get why Cat Williams is upset with that. Y'all got to understand, nigga. This is the '90s. Mm. It is super hard to really um, gauge whether someone's stealing a joke or not. Um, I just saw something Bernie Mac said. He was like, you know, watch what you do in a room full of comics because it's first come, first serve on the jokes. And that was back then when there wasn't social media. Now you do a joke or a bit that someone else has done instantly because someone else saw it. Yeah. And so if they just happen to correlate those jokes, they're like, nigga, I done heard that joke before. I heard this joke three weeks ago right. with this comment. Check when it was posted and be like, yo, he posted that five, five, 10 weeks exactly. ago. Exactly. So, so social media now is much faster than it was back then. And there was no social media mm-hmm. at that time. So Cedric doing something that Cat Williams did, Cedric knew that Comic View was a bigger platform. Mm-hmm. So now he re and he he stole the concept and revamped it for himself. Let's be honest. He revamped that goddamn joke. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. He revamped that joke. Mm. Like, I don't know why people are even arguing that. He did. He he know he took it. That's why when he responded, he was like, oh, I don't remember all that. Yeah, you do. You took the <laughs> fucking joke. And it's okay that you took the I'm not saying it's okay. It's not okay. But whatever happened, happened. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Just own up to it. Hey, I man, admit I, it at yeah, this point. Yeah, man, at this shit. point, just, hey, man, I took the joke, nigga. Like, like it. You know, I needed this for my career. I felt like this was my career on the line or something like that, or I was getting really close, and I needed that it joke, and that joke was it. Mm. You can say that. You know what I mean? Um, and, again, like, I do blame, like, the industry for creating those type of narratives where niggas is so desperate that they got to go out and they got to take and take from other people and then hold them down while they try to rise to the top. Mm-hmm. And so, you know what I mean? And and that I that's all I took from Cat Williams. Like, big thing is like, hey, some of these niggas are phonies. These are phonies. Right. And, you know, it is what it is, man. Well, it sounds like they do certain things to put themselves in positions. Exactly. Freaky they do. Ass. Yeah, they do. And that too, man, you know, even being out here, bro, it's a lot of, I always used to ask people that on, on you know, when I was doing back, uh, background was like, hey, what wouldn't you do? You know what I mean? If they came in and they said, "Hey Jeremiah, would you would you act like you getting pounded out by a man?" Hell no. You might as well go ahead and cancel Christmas. That's mm-hmm. not happening. Mm-hmm. You know? And some other dude might do that. Mm-hmm. If there's this like thing now where like some of the uh the heterosexual men are pretending to be um yeah. gay on on camera. It's a dude from P Valley. Yeah. Um he got a wife and children and I ain't bashing him, but he, uh, brother from P Valley, he's he's not gay. Um, there's another uh, a white guy. I think he won an award. Yeah, and he he played uh, a gay character, a LB, uh, LGBTQ it's character like, as there's well. There's playing gay characters, and then there's like initiating like soon like uh, having sex on camera. Yeah, like gay sex on camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are two totally different things. You think? Oh, okay. I think some people would be like, okay, I will play a gay character. I don't as long as I'm just like. A gay character, yeah, just acting like, like I'm the gay feminine or yeah, something like that, whatever. Or, like, yeah. who cares? Okay. But if I have to be on there, pretend like I'm sucking dick, <laughs> like DeAndre, but not, I don't, bro, I don't know if you know DeAndre Bonds, the nigga who played uh, Stacy in the wood. Yeah. Okay, so he had a role in Lockdown. In oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of okay, course. We know. Remember yeah. Lockdown? Yeah, yeah. Where he was Remember, getting, yeah, you getting yes. tossed the fuck up, though. That for, shit? For, for five scenes. For five scenes. Five getting, different scenes, getting, getting thrown, yeah, thrown, tossed, tossed up. About. Yeah. Like. That kind of shit. And he, then he said it broke him. <laughs> yeah. And if you look at his, his, IMD, his IMDb, bro, right mm-hmm. after that film is when he, like, went kind of off the rails and he killed his aunt's uh, boyfriend and then he went to jail for 10 years. He oh. got out in thir- when he was 35. Damn. But after that, like, he just went crazy. So, mm-hmm. like, that he said, and he said that took a piece from him. That, yeah. Because that's not him. Yeah. To play something that you can't all the way relate to. Yeah. That 
and then on top tough. of that, and then on top of that, like you know what I mean. I don't care what anybody say. When you get off set, you got to deal with the people in your life. So when you turn on Prime Video, you turn on Netflix, and you see your best friend, who you know got a wife and kids yeah. on their sucking dick, it's gonna make you, it's gonna make you like, like it's gonna, it's gonna make you think something. Yeah, it's gonna make you think something. Yeah, and to put people in these positions all the time is crazy. Like you see these people losing their mind over little roles and shit like that. Like you know, playing the serial killer, playing this, you got to get into method acting. That's what it's called. Yeah, method. You see, you see people getting hurt and have to go to phys- uh, like go to therapy and stuff like that for all that stuff. Mm-hmm. What do you think? These some of these people don't even think about their sexuality. They just know they like women. Now you on set getting pounded out by a man, and you sitting over there in the corner, and they're like, and 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 you know you you've been to a uh, set before. They're like, cut, do it again. Yeah. So this is over yeah. and over yeah, I, and over <laughs> and over. You getting fucked. 40, we need, we need 40 another times angle. A day. Yeah, we need another angle. All right, Let's get a wide shot. Get a wide shot. It's like, and and the white guy's just sitting there, ready to go again. You know what I'm saying though, bro? Nah. And that's what DeAndre Bond said. He said, I'll do this shit only because I'm contractually like obligated. Yeah. But nigga, I'm not doing 17 like I'm not doing this shit over and over again. I'm not doing this over and over. I'm not doing 14 takes, nigga. We're Man. doing this one time. And he said, all that happened was he's like, the white dude was standing up yeah. in front of him mm-hmm. and he was sitting on the bed and the camera angle was behind you, behind yeah. him. Mm-hmm. And it he just showed him kind of like just bobbing his head, like bobbing for apples. And he said, that's what it looks like. But like, if you look at it on camera, hey, it looks the, real, hey, my hey, nigga. Hey, them niggas, hey, them niggas. <laughs> Cause the white hey, dude was like, oh. That nigga know how to oh. use, that, they know how to do Premiere Pro, nigga. <laughs> they, they experts in Premiere Pro. That, hey, you sure, nigga? Cause, Cause that nigga looked like he was stroking your shit. He, did, he said all oh, they were doing was bobbing for apples. Nah, <laughs> nah. He looked like he was killing your shit. And yeah, and like he's on the ah, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. It was bad, man. Bro. And that's bad. just crazy, dog. So you know, I get why Cat Williams, you know, is telling people don't wear the dress. I see the dress is like. I see it as a physical thing and a mental thing, my nigga. Yeah, because it's like, it's a like of, uh, yeah, it's, exactly. It's uh, like you are. Now. I get you in this dress. I can get you to do damn near anything. You like our bitch now. You, yeah, you the industry bitch. Yeah, we gonna have you do whatever. And I think like it comes with talent too. But like it also depends on like who you are, bro. I think mm-hmm. like you know, say they wanted like the nigga who plays Willy Wonka, the new nigga Timothy Sh- Shamalet, okay, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. They want him to wear a dress. He could say, "No, I'm good," and they'd be like, "All right, cool." Yeah, fine. You can still get all the best movies because you're Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, and you're, and you're white. white man. You're white guy. Yeah, but like niggas, you're gonna have to do a lot more. Okay, yeah. so if you want to get a certain, t- you're gonna have to wear a dress, be gay, pretend you're gay, do whatever you have to do. Yeah. Like, or you can just there. take the long way around. Or you, or you say no, and you, it just makes it harder. Yeah, it's not like it's not like it, it's, it's totally impossible for you to come back from that. It no, just, it's, not. it's just. It's just you don't get that boost. You don't, you don't get, get that, that boost. boost. Yeah, and that's you know that's what I was talking about. Just like you see these guys, like I gotta make it, bro. Yeah. I got. And I'm gonna be real with you. A lot of those niggas don't even look. And this is me saying this. It's like they don't even look Hollywood. I'm sorry, Cedric no. the Entertainer looks like my uncle. Like he does not look. <laughs> he does not look that's what, Hollywood. That's what Cal was saying. He, he doesn't. Like, he doesn't look are... Hollywood. So when you see niggas like that, and ah, oh, bro, and I hate to be that guy, but. It's like when you don't look Hollywood, a lot of times niggas going to ask, like, how you do this? Exactly. How did you get here? Right. You know what I mean? Because right. you swear you're a comedian, and nigga, you ain't sold out no arenas. Nothing. I ain't seen one ticket. I ain't, <laughs> you ain't sold out arenas <laughs> and stuff like that. Now, the Kevin Hart thing, the Kevin Hart thing oh, yeah. is a little different for me just because this is where I also blame Cat a little bit mm-hmm. because, again, I know the history of Cat, Cat mm-hmm. Williams and stuff like that, and I used to work – um, for Phillips Arena, I was there that day that he got he had to cancel his show because he had a spider bite allergy or whatever. That nigga was high as fuck in the back. I'm not saying he a drug addict. I'm Cat not saying Williams. he an alcohol. Yes, yeah. the nigga was the nigga was high as, as a motherfucking kite. Mm. He could have been on marijuana. Dave Chappelle talks about it all the time when he gets a little too high. And he yeah. goes out there, he it's bombs tough. a show. Yeah, you tough. know what I mean? And and I think that the nigga was just too high back there. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? But the only part, that's the only part that I, I do agree with Kevin Hart is that you talk about going to, it's a joke, 19, you know, I went to jail 19 times, no convictions. Mm-hmm. 
But you went to jail 19 times, bro, during your regular career. Yeah. You can't be going in and out of jail like that. You're missing roles. You're missing opportunities. And you're no missing one, shows. Bro, no one's putting that. you in jail 19 times for nothing. <laughs> yeah. For completely nothing. I've never been jailed 19 times and for nothing. And you're fighting 13-year-old boys. That, you know what I mean? Was, Remember that, that video? That was on camera. That was on, that camera. Was on that camera. That was you. That was you, Cap. And he wasn't winning. <laughs> yeah, that 14 year old boy was kind of had that nigga in a chokehold in the, on the corner of the building. I'm saying, oh, Lord. <laughs> Cat. Yeah, that shit is crazy because you a grown ass man. Grown ass man. I don't man. care if you five five. You a grown ass man. And so, you know what I mean? We can talk about how the industry fucked him. Yes. We can talk about how his, the, the, his colleagues, you yeah. know, misused him. Yes. But that part of Kevin Hart's thing is true. The nigga w did absolutely fuck up a lot of his chances. Yeah. And so they, you know, Kevin Hart came along, and it's not even to say Kevin, Kevin Hart, Hart is, is a saint. funny, though. Here's, and yeah. I was, I was, that's yeah, what yeah, I was going to ask. Go I was going to say, what about Kevin Hart as King of Comedy? I think that nigga's I think hilarious. He, I think he's hilarious, too. I think Kevin Hart is fucking yeah. funny. And the thing about that story was he didn't really specify really specify what happened between him and Kevin. He's just like, whenever I walk in, Kevin walks to exact he walks right out. He walks right out because I'm built different. I'm built like this. Like mm -hmm. I'm not a gatekeeper like type shit. And, and I like, think that's what that's what he I think that's what it is. I think he's upset because Kevin Hart is where he wants to be. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about the gatekeeping part. I'm just saying that I think that, that he felt like Cause like I see a lot of stories where Cat Williams is giving back to a lot of comedians. A lot of comedians opened up and talked about how you know Cat does. I do think that Kevin is very particular with the type of people they keep around him. Mm -hmm. And as a gatekeeper, he is a gatekeeper in my opinion. Mm -hmm. As that, it is it you, you're always going to be the you're always going to be the nigga on the outside. You're always going to be the coon because people have to come through you to do comedy. Yep. You know what I mean? Kevin Hart shows up at your comedy set. That's a big deal. Huge. People are gonna watch you just because Kevin's. If there. you get up, uh, I would I would call it a cosign from like rapping. Nicki Minaj yep. hop on your shit. That's a cosign. Yep. She she puts you on that. That's a cosign. Beyonce puts you up there. That's a cosign. Yep. So I understand that. I understand that. Like you know what Kevin. But the, uh, the other part of that is I, I can't really get with him on the Kevin Hart situation because I know your history, bro. You did some shit in your past, bro. You did do some shit. Yeah. And in this industry, it's about momentum. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sure it was, and after the Pimp Pimp Chronicles, you kind of, like, that was when you went on the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. You kept going to jail. for if, Whether it was your fault or not, mm -hmm. you kept going to jail. You kept going in and out of jail. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, bro, it's about momentum, bro. Like, it is what it is. Kevin Hart, y'all can't lie. During that whole year, I mean, whole transition to where he's going from all these different clubs to when he gets his special and sells out arenas, he didn't do anything. No, it wasn't until after. I did shit. I thought the nigga was a family man. Exactly. It you know, until it got caught on camera fucking another woman. Yeah. You know, I thought he was a family man. So you can't get mad at the marketing and things like that. You can't get mad at that, bro. Mm -hmm. That's the, my only problem with the whole Kevin Hart. Th I mean, Kevin Hart thing. And what you I, can't get mad at bro, that, bro. What I didn't, what I didn't like about Cat though is that he kind of made it seem like the nigga was perfect. Like I'm Cat Williams, and I'm perfect. Well, yeah. You know, just because I went to just because I went to jail that many times, I ain't you know I wasn't convicted. No, but nigga, like you said, we went. You went to jail. Yeah. So it's like yeah. you went to jail those times. Kevin Hart didn't. Yeah. There you and go. kept and kept rising movies, Move, exactly. movies exactly. to to shows to all this stuff. Kevin Hart kind of had the, and this is why you have a good team. This is what you have a good team for. I was just thinking yeah. about this this morning. Mm -hmm. You, this is why you have good people around you, mm -hmm. so they could be like, Tim, we not doing that. Yeah, We're not. That's dead as fuck. You're not going to that club. Yeah. You got you. You know you got to roll in the morning. Put Get that, your, put that liquor down. Put your ass bed. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You, you can have your weed though. You have your weed, but <laughs> go, night go, night. go go to bed, bro. <laughs> and that's why you have your team. Like you know what I mean. And that's why he put those boys up. He put the you know the the plastic cup boys up because again, those niggas made sure he was solid. They did. How many of those niggas do you speaking out on 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 Kevin right now? Not many. Mm -hmm. Not many of them. Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. You kind of had you kind of was doing whatever you wanted to do. You were getting in the fights. You were doing all this stuff. And it is what it is. Now, do I think you're a drug addict? No, I, I don't know. I don't, I really don't. But at the end of the day, you was going in and out of jail, and your ass was drunk as fuck. Yeah, bro. <laughs> your ass was drunk as shit. Yeah. 
And like, I remember we, that like, shit that's from just Atlanta. being real, though. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. we love Cat, but Cat... We do like, love Cat. You, you, you probably fucked up some opportunities, and you mad and you bitter about it. Yeah. And that's understandable. And it's okay to be bitter and mad about it, because I do think that if Cat doesn't have half the shit go, go wrong... He's up there, nigga. He, yeah, he is. he's on the Mount Rushmore. Yes. It's not a it's not it's a matter of fact. No, that nigga is funny. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He's funny. You know, and the only thing that I think Cat is really upset is that like now looking back, you just see a lot of niggas that just not supposed to be in a position that they are, and that's what the the industry is. It's an opportunity and some niggas step on niggas just to get to where they need to get to. Yep. You know it's what I mean? Dirty. And it's the industry dirty, don't give a fuck. No. It could be a dirty industry. Yeah, you don't, know, don't go in there with twinkle toes and, and yeah. thinking like, oh, everybody's gonna be happy and we're gonna get along and work together. Mm-hmm. No, nigga, it's a competition. Yeah, kind of like what he was saying to, uh, to Shannon. He was like, when you played, were you had friends with the other team? Like, no, you know. nigga, this is a competition. Yeah, we're trying to get to where we're sport. trying to get to. Yeah. And some of them niggas, they group together when they get up there, and they're like, "Hey, bro, we ain't letting nobody up." Now I don't yeah. like shit like that. Like, I yeah. I can't no, I can't I can't get behind shit like that. I can't get behind that. Dog. Imagine if all the kings of comedy came together and actually like set up something for like started a new comic view or started something. Yeah, like, something something big. Yeah, it's just like now. Even same thing something. with Dave Chappelle. You know what I mean? The one thing that I don't know what he's doing, but that's the one thing I th- I feel like Dave Chappelle should be doing as well, bro. You seen how they treated y'all? Y'all seen how the industry treated y'all? You had the number one show on on uh, on Comedy Central. I'm gonna be real. During that time, I don't, I can't recall a bigger show than the Dave Chappelle show no, during that time it was period. Just like South Park. Yeah, like South Park. It. But that's I'm it. sorry, bro. Like Dave Chappelle, like bro, we we were quoting that shit in school. Man, everybody was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wednesday nights. Y'all man. need to come together. Tuesday. Night. And. Y'all need to come together and y'all need to create a space where these guys can develop, mature, all that stuff. That way, the ones that need to be up there, like the Dave Chappelle's, the ones that are smart enough can be up there. And the ones that are probably mid-tier, like Steve Harvey, maybe they are doing global you know, tours and shit, but they're not climbing the ranks. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that's just my thing like that, bro. Like, we know the industry wants puppets. We know that now. We we understand yeah. they want mouthpieces. They want niggas that ain't going to speak on what's going on in the backdrop. Right. But, you know, that's just how I feel about that. But Yes, sir. Hey, man. Cat, great interview. Yeah, Everybody, it was good, Cat. Yeah, it was a good, good interview. Shit. Uh, let's let's get into the DJ act, man. <laughs> now, first I want to start off with him losing his Spotify deal real quick. Um, he loses his Spotify deal. Um, and he talks about it. And now, the one thing I hate about DJ Academics is DJ Academics lies a lot, and but <laughs> he lies a lot for for a grown ass man. But the other part of that is, he was talking about it, and he was like, "Well, I wasn't doing enough shows, and you know, they said I need to do more shows and all this stuff." Big dog, that means you weren't doing what you were supposed to do, in my opinion, bro. Like you wasn't doing being what lazy, you were being lazy. And to be honest with you, man, a lot of these Spotify deals and stuff like that, unless you just mind-blowingly good, like you're like million dollars worth of game, you're Joe Rogan, you're bringing on all these different guests, yeah. that's the only way you're going to get really big money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened, bro. And Joe it's not, Rogan kind of set the standard for that. Mm-hmm. You know? I think all of them did. I think million dollars worth of game did. Um, I think all of them did. I think a, a lot of those bigger platforms, they set the precedent. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, you're bringing it off the record. First of all, DJ Academics, half the industry hates you. So you're going to have to keep bringing on the same niggas and all that stuff. You're going to have to bring on some of these smaller rappers or, you know, like Lil Dirk. I think he brought on Lil Dirk. I think he brought on no, um, Funny Dirk. Marco and stuff like that. But outside of those, you're not going to bring on a bigger audience right you know even people like Charlamagne. he was trying to get Charlemagne on his shit Charlemagne didn't want to go on your shit niggas gotta like you yeah niggas don't like academics like that bro they no. never like that nigga since no. youtube they don't like no. this nigga like and, I, and for for a good reason to me like the nigga's a bitch i'm sorry like he's a bitch <laughs> he's a he's a good commentator bitch he's a bitch it's okay um but uh you know, hey, it is what it is. But um, that's not what everybody wants to talk about, though. Everybody wants to talk about that crazy girlfriend in which, Tim, before we even get to the girlfriend, he before she came out and said something, which I don't think she would have said anything if he didn't say something. He went on his podcast, on the same podcast, and said, hey, I had this girl who stole $500,000 from me in cash. She stole it out my safe or whatever. And then he says the same girl came over while I was sleeping in the bed, and then I woke up, 
to walk my niggas out, looked on the CCTV camera, and watched her getting blasted downstairs on the CCTV camera. No. He volunteered this. No, that's not. Batman couldn't beat this out of me, Tim. No, bro, that's not. Batman couldn't beat this out of me, bro. You could be in there tasing my nuts. You when you could be in there waterboarding me. You could you could hit me with a lethal lethal injection. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so I, I I just I'm like, all right, bro, you you but then the girlfriend comes out and this is what the girlfriend said. The girlfriend said that it wasn't just them, it was you on top of her too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she said she woke up and uh, you was right there on top of her. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy, dog. That's nuts. That's nuts. Like, what are we doing here? Like, know, what is the fuck? What the crazy. fuck are we doing, dog? I, I like. This is why I don't drink, bro. This is exactly why I don't drink, my nigga. Because they gonna blame all the shit on alcohol. Niggas not doing mm-hmm. this in the normal state of mind. Yeah, we not all tossing up your girlfriend in a normal state of mind. Yeah, bro. No, but nigga. first of all, you might, been, nigga. I done been drunk, drunk, bro. I done been drunky, drunk, nigga. I ain't never seen a girl come over. For my homeboy and said, "Hey, I'm gonna throw you on this couch. And I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you." <laughs> and and Tim's coming along too. I've never <laughs> in my life said no shit like that. <laughs> I've never in my life done no shit this like nigga that. Make bro. it seem like he woke up. Yeah, he was. <laughs> Let me check my CCTV. <laughs> yeah, holy, holy shit. Yeah, he's like, I don't know why I checked my CCTV camera. <laughs> okay, bro. All right, buddy. And then she's saying that you won't even give her the tape, bro. You know how it looks. You know what I'm saying? You know how it looks, that's my bad, nigga. Bro. That shit look bad as fuck. Bad, I said that's crazy. Act. I don't. I don't know how to even big act. Like man. you know what I mean? We knew you was a dweeb, my nigga, but you can't be doing <laughs> shit like this, my nigga. You've been watching too much Fresh and Fit, bro. You've been watching too much Fresh too and much, Fit, bro. Nigga said he was sleep, woke up to his niggas leaving, and you know what I mean? You, you think he finna lose lose some shit, bro? Is, are we on a nah, downward trend? I do think we see in the downfall, but like his, his niggas aren't going nowhere, bro. He loves those incel ass, in the room ass niggas and all that stuff. And the other thing that I think that made his like podcast fail was that like he was trying to do shows. He was trying to do like pop out shows with him and like acting friends and shit like that. Mm. And he was trying to do that and nobody was buying the tickets. I think he only had one show that did really well. I would the never. other couple shows, like Charleston White got that bitch canceled because he was going crazy online. The other one no That's one showed nigga. up to. <laughs> That's my nigga. And, and that's Texas very own Charleston. That's, that's, Charleston. <laughs> that's my nigga, dog. Yeah, dog. I so. love that old nigga. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I love that nigga, dog. Yeah, dog. That shit crazy. I watch all his say uh, say cheese shit. Dude? That shit is funny, bro. That nigga is funny. Yeah, he he a funny nigga, dog. But yeah, bro. I think academics. Yeah, he. he it's is gonna be a downward trend, bro. All you, in all, you know what I mean, man. And and I really don't feel sorry for him though, because like, bro, you've been going after all these women. And shit, and it's like, nigga, handle your handle your own, bro. Like you, you so bad with women. Like, how are you gonna give anybody advice? I don't, I don't ever want to hear your advice. It's, it's like you oh, had a man. woman cut your Wi Fi off, my nigga. Like, nah, yeah. dog. I don't want to hear about. I don't want to hear no woman advice from you, bro. You're mm. the worst. Fuck. <laughs> so you know, academics. I hope you have a great, a better year than this year, nigga. <laughs> God damn, all you got is Twitch and YouTube, nigga. So hey, it is what it is. Now. <laughs> Please tell me you've heard about TD Jakes over the holidays. I do want to talk about it because we haven't talked about. Me it. and my guy, man, that was my <laughs> guy. Is that your boy? Is that your boy? You love TD, bro. Jake? I used to love. I used to listen to TD Jakes all the time. Mm-hmm. My dad kind of put me on, and like, he was the only one that I could really listen to as a preacher. You know. Uh huh. Man, I heard some wild shit about TD. Yeah, man. now you. But hear. like, you know what though? I kind of seen the change for myself. I never said anything, mm-hmm. but when he started wearing the oversized suits to all the tight shit that he was, because sure. he went from oversized like just a regular, regular tire, tire yeah. to like everything's tight, tight. nipples hard at church and shit. I'm like, look, look, I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, you kind of look kind of crazy, crazy, TD. Yeah. <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> now we're now we're swallowed. Have you ever been swallowed up? And everything. Feeling overwhelming. That nigga was having a flashback on stage <laughs> in God's house. 
Oh, yeah, having and then a when flashback Terry, and, and stuff. When he had uh, Tyler Perry come and, and, and put his, did you see that, bro? Bro, hell no. Bro, Please tell me what Tyler you're talking Perry about. Tyler Perry come to church, come to his church. Mm-hmm. Tyler Perry prayed over him, put his hand on him, and T.D. Jakes was, oh, 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 Lord. Like he caught the spirit off of Tyler Perry, nigga. Tyler yeah, he Perry. did. He <laughs> caught the spirit off of Tyler <laughs> yeah. Perry. The Medea spirit, nigga. Nigga, nigga. Was having, yeah, nigga was having <laughs> flashbacks. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord. Lord Jesus, man! They saying that man like, is. A, oh, TV. They saying he a power bottom, bro. Oh, TD, bro. <laughs> That's crazy, my nigga. TD. That shit is crazy. You think he did it though? For real, for real? You think he did it? You think he? You think he's at P Diddy parties going crazy? Bro, I mean, he's uh, there's pictures. Where, where, like, why would you go to a P Diddy party why, as a yeah, pastor? That's what I'm saying. That's no, I'm there's not going no there. Reason to yeah. be out there like that. Nah, you can't say nothing like, oh, I'm counseling or I'm, yeah, I'm, you I'm, can. I'm doing. No, nigga, you can do that shit in private. He can come to you in private. Yeah, come for to you your to church. be out and about with Diddy taking pictures, yeah. posing, putting up hand signs and all Illuminati type. Sh- I'm like. Mm-hmm. Yo, TD. Yeah, TD out there. Wow, wow, you wow. <laughs> you right there with Cleflo now. Yeah, dog. That shit, shit is crazy. Cleflo didn't get this high. And then his, and then, it, nah, Clef, cause that's because Cleflo beats his kids. <laughs> 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 but it also, what's crazy is like, um, it, it, he his response was really crazy to me because he said, he literally said in his response, all I got to do is repent. He said, all I got to do is see, repent. I didn't, I didn't even see that part. Big dog, you look it up when you I get a chance. He said, all I got to do is repent. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Even if I did do all that stuff, <laughs> I, I didn't do it. But all I got to do is repent. This is why niggas don't go to church, bro. This is why I don't. This I stop going to church, bro. Because y'all, y'all niggas will scold us, young people, mm-hmm. to the day we die. You'll, you'll scold us. But when you do it, oh, yeah, all I got to do is go to the altar. <laughs> Exactly. No, bro. No, I grew up, bro. I, I pretty much grew up in the church, bro. I mean, yeah. Joseph Brooks. Mm-hmm. That man. That man still preaches to this day. Yeah, yeah. My dad still preaches. Mm-hmm. But like, I never really fully resonated with anything in church. Sure. I could just. It don't matter. I went to the multiple churches, different churches, mm-hmm. and I've never gotten like any sort of feeling where I'm like, oh, this is like what I want. This, this is, is what I need for I me. Need. Yeah, this, I need this. never, never. But the funny thing is. T.D. Jakes would get me like that. Yeah. Well, but when, now that I look at it, it was more of like a motivational mm-hmm. speaking kind of trying thing. Trying to, yeah. Not really towards like leaning me towards Christianity, just yeah. pumping me up as a, as a man. As a man. So I'm like, all right, cool. So you felt like you needed that confidence. Yeah, bro. You confidence. just need motivation. Yeah. And I feel like that's that. what T.D. Okay. brought to me. Mm-hmm. And But I never felt like, I, like I've, I've never been, people get go to church and like. Get the Holy Spirit. I've never, that. no. No, I've never done that No, either. nigga. I don't. I thought that was like yeah. fake. I was like, "Why are these <laughs> niggas running around the church? And like, what is going on?" And I just thought it was like, uh, "Like, okay, this is just how." But it, it never happened to me, bro. Yeah. I just like it didn't feel. And, real. and I think like you know, my dad is one, literally. Um, I do love Reverend O. Williams too. My old um, pastor. He he resonated with me a lot because he honestly, bro. My church. We didn't talk about like gay people or homosexuality and stuff like that. I think we had one sermon where he. He kind of hinted at it, but it wasn't even like fuck gay people or or they shouldn't be their abominations. It was more like it was more like, hey man, sometimes people are gonna like have choices in their life that they make mm. that just you know you're not gonna resonate. You don't understand, but you're there for them. Right. And I think that was the only conversation. He didn't have like these yelling, you know, you need to stop. You're going to hell type. I ain't never been a part of those. Right. You get what I'm saying? Um, so that's why I liked my church, but my I also started falling out with the church because he passed away, and it was kind of like weird. the pastors. Yep, and then also the congregation got weird. Mm. And I'm gonna be real, bro. Like pastors really do hold that congregation together. They do our, because our a lot of people now, yeah. turn against the word of God, in my opinion, based off of who that pastor is. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. started that that pastor started being hell. The congregation started being hell, mm-hmm. gossiping, doing all that stuff. Um, I, I didn't want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, and then, like, my dad also told me, he stopped he stopped even waking me up. He was like, you got to make that walk towards God. You got to make that walk. You got to make that pillage for yourself. Mm-hmm. And you old enough, you, you're 15, 16 years old. You, you know what I mean? You already know it's wrong or right, but you need to go make that shit for yourself. So I'm going to go to church. And I ain't gonna lie to you. From then on, I ain't go to church. Right, bro. 100%. <laughs> and I feel you. Like, yeah. I feel like, Maybe at a certain point in life, like 
Honestly, forever, bro. Mm-hmm. Church has just been used for monetization purposes. Yeah. Nigga, we got to monetize off of God somehow. Yeah. So come to church. Give us your tithes and your offering, yep. which is 10% of what you make, yep. apparently. <laughs> and I, we appreciate it. And then God will bless you. It's and like, then, God might not bless me, though. And then this nigga got fired from his job. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, where did he get blessed? Ex- exactly. Yeah. Or or you see Creflo with, on a PJ. Yeah, you see, so it's like, yeah. with my money. money. Like, <laughs> nigga, I just with gave my money. you my money, dog. I just gave you $200, nigga. Yeah, you nah. flying over me and shit. Like, yeah. I'm Talking about God room. is good all the time. I bet he is, nigga. I bet, I bet he is. <laughs> yeah, I bet he is, nigga. You my little beetle down here. Yeah, shit, you, down, you down here trying to start your shit up. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga took my last hundred. I need to fucking fix this bitch. <laughs> nah, for real, I, dog. nah, for real, for real. So you know what I mean, and and it, and it, it does. It is demoralizing because I grew up off TD Jakes too. Yeah, and it's demoralizing because it's like these are supposed to be at least, at the very least, people of God. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and bro. you down there with Diddy, take that, take that, take that. Take no. that, take that, take that. Nah. And it's funny because, bro, you're not just with like, I mean, I understand Denzel's not particularly like super Christian, but he does sure. have Christian type values. Sure. Like, you know, he loves the Lord and speaks yeah. about that. But like, you chose to chill with Diddy, my nigga. Yeah. And, the and, worst of the and worst. And the thing is, you had to be hearing the rumors. You had, you know. Like, the rumors were hot back then. Like, like, rappers were running away from that nigga. Yes, <laughs> in, bro. In broad daylight. Yes. Do you see that? Do you see that video of him uh, talking to young Justin Bieber? Like, yes, like it was his Just, pimp and shit. Yeah, Justin. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you big now, huh? You ain't calling me no more now, huh? I was like, what? Like he wanted to slap the shit yeah, out, of out of out of Justin Bieber, a little fifteen year old kid. I was like, yo, was he's pressing my nigga Bieber. He pressing <laughs> that nigga. He pressing that nigga. He was pressing that nigga. And Bieber was like, uh, yeah, he's you like, know, uh, I got a new people. number. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Canada now, you know what I mean? Man, he was beating Bieber shit here. Yo, and honestly, Sean, all that shit, it kind of put me in a rabbit hole for Bieber. Hey, you got to respect Bieber. Mm-hmm. Bieber then came, Bieber, Bieber came from nothing too. Bieber, yeah. hey man, Bieber's yeah. Bieber, bro. Yeah. He and, is talented. And, yeah, he talented. He is talented. Yeah, he don't like his wife, but he definitely talented. <laughs> <laughs> he don't like his wife, dog. There's no way you like your wife, bro. <laughs> you don't like it. It's okay, bro. We know. We get it, bro. You want the green card. It's all yeah. good. And she, I don't know what she want, but she, she there. So she already got money. Yeah. She a Baldwin. She's a who? A a Baldwin. What's that? Like the actors? Ooh, Baldwin. really? Yeah, she come never for money. knew that. Never yeah. knew that. I don't. You know, I don't know these white people. <laughs> <laughs> she come for money, big dog. Oh, okay. So she ain't oh, really she not bro. Oh, she ain't worried about it, man. Y'all keep doing y'all bank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm minding y'all business. Y'all keep doing your thing. I, I'll leave out of it. I'll leave out of it. Haley Baldwin. Haley Baldwin. I got. I got to look that up. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. Uh, really, kind of last thing. It's sort of the same thing. Tasha K is getting sued again, Damn. and again, and this Damn. time it's Kevin fucking Hart. So Kevin Hart, <laughs> you on one this this year? Oh yeah, I heard um, about that. I did so, hear about that. I heard about. That. Long story short, um. Uh, Tasha K sat down with a former assistant of Kevin Hart and started discussing some things that was happening. Uh, they, she talked about a goddamn illegal shower. Um, she talked about there was an illegal shower and like the Hart production thing and stuff. And he would like have sex on the couches and stuff of Hart uh, production, and then he would go take a shower in the hidden shower, and then he'd go home to his wife. So and then he always cheats on. He's, he's he always, always cheats on his wife. Yeah, he's always cheats on his wife. Now. And then they talked about that. Um, and then you know that car crash came up. You remember mm, that car that crash? Car wreck, yep. And so they supposedly they're saying that he paid a stranger four million dollars to take his place in the um, in the car accident, like to to be in the driver's seat of his car. Some random ass nigga or random person. So what? It was fake. Well, what they said that Kevin Hart was driving. Okay. And he replaced him. Oh. And he replaced okay. him. A okay. stranger. Okay. Replaced him. Mm. Why would you give a string? I, I don't I see, but you see what I mean. Like that, those stories are kind of hard for me to believe because mm. it's like he just pick a nigga off the street or how did yeah, that call? Yeah, like how did that happen? How did that happen? Bro? Like how did you know she, he was gonna get into a wreck? And then also like <laughs> you know clearly okay, let's say he was super inebriated. I would never think in my head like, yeah, let me. Uh, okay, so so this is what we're nigga, picturing. Well, yeah, the niggas crash. Sure, there's already a nigga in the car. A random nigga, and then he's like, "All right, let's switch sides, so I don't go to jail." I would hope, I would hope that's the and case. I'll pay you a million. Yeah, dollars. I would hope that that nigga was already in, in the car, 
But it, but it said but she said stranger. So it's like, why is the stranger riding with <laughs> Kevin hiking, Hart? Nigga hiking up. Yeah, he's hiking up the fucking. Like, hey, is that Kevin Hart? Hey, I'm making four million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I got four million dollars for you. Just sit here. Just sit, sit, here. sit in the driver's sit seat. Here. Please sit in the driver's seat. Okay, my nigga. All right. All right, Kevin. Sure. You're Kevin Hart. I would have sat. Honestly, I probably would have sat in that bitch for free. <laughs> for free. Yeah. It's already injured. It, like all I gotta do is act like I'm injured. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd like, all of my system. Like, ah, ah. Can you put me in one of your films? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> I'm gonna go see Heart Productions. Yeah, man. That yeah. shit was crazy. Um, and so he's suing uh, Tasha K because um, apparently there was a lot of lies being told, but there was also. Um, the young lady also signed an NDA or something like that. Yes, yeah, and broke so she, she broke. broke her contract or whatever. So she finna, so get, she finna get fucking sued herself. So that's stupid. Don't break your NDAs. And th- but don't go to Tasha K. Like what the fuck? Like yeah. don't go to Tasha K, my nigga. She's not rep. In my opinion, she's lost her reputation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's getting the views. She's getting the money. I don't care about that. But like. She's lost her reputation about like whether it's real. The only people who gonna believe that goddamn story is niggas who just love the fucking gossip, just love the gossip, love the conspiracies and mm-hmm. stuff. Even if it was true, it's like it's hard to believe. Yeah, it's just so hard to fucking believe. And, and you went to the Kevin Hart shit, not that hard to believe though. Well, the I'm, I want the the car crash. Oh, the car shit. shit. Yeah, the car that. shit. No, no, no. The Nothing cheating the, shit. The cheating shit, bro. That's all let's film, be, nigga. Big dog. The funniest. <laughs> the funniest part too is like, okay. These niggas clearly make up a marketing scheme to be a family man and all that stuff. We know they're not. They're celebrities. They're going to do whatever the fuck they want to do. They got all that money, all that time, all that power. And and this is like the year of exposure. You're going to get that from all these guys that Mm -hmm. they're not who they say they are. They don't like people. (laughs) Okay, cool. Whatever. You know, I get it. And if he's cheating on his wife, that's fucked up. I do think that's fucked up to have that woman in there and you cheating on her mm-hmm. and stuff like that. The woman said that she was going in there changing the sheets and, or, like, changing the pillows and all that stuff, cleaning all that, you know, come up and all that, that stuff. See, I, now, I wouldn't do that. I was a nut everywhere. Yeah. Shit. Okay. God damn, I ain't know so much nut in a little ass nigga. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. I do believe that he cheated. Though. Yeah, I believe that, bro. I think a lot of them niggas is just like they just don't give a fuck. No, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. And and I think now he has so much money, bro. When you get when you that nigga, uh, when you get that much money, can't tell you, shit. you can't tell that nigga shit. You got hard. He can just pay for it. Thinking. Yeah, literally Like pay for it to go away That's what he thought he could do But here's the thing That shit I mean that shit yeah. came to light man. Yeah that you shit is on the that internet forever bro That shit is on the internet My nigga so <laughs> Yeah man Yeah shout out to Kevin Hart man It was it was a great week It was a great week Yeah uh, fun, Great first week, week of January <laughs> Yeah um, Shout out to the nigga I don't know if you've seen this Tim Shout out to the nigga Who jumped That goddamn judge Did you see that shit dog No There I was a man it. Who Who Leaped over the judge's podium to get at the judge, like, I, and he cleared it, Tim. <laughs> he cleared it. Like you, you've been to, like you've been to, you track me, tra- yeah. So like, oh no, the, the podiums are bigger than a trap me. It's yeah. not as tall as that TV. Yeah. So he cleared that. Yeah, he and pulled jumped all the, yeah, <laughs> jumped on the goddamn judge, my nigga. So yeah, That's man. Hilarious. Shout out to that nigga, man. Hey, man. I get it, bro. You know, you, you didn't. But yeah, he he was in that bitch for aggravated battery though. Well, yeah, and it was, he was denied bail. He was denied bail. It wasn't wrong. Yeah, they weren't wrong about Get that you. nigga off the street, man. She was trying to move the fuck out the way. <laughs> she said, oh, oh shit, shit. Oh, yeah, bro. I was like, oh shit, I would ask him. <laughs> the nigga next to her fucked up though, because the nigga next to her looked like he trying to run away. I don't think he thought this nigga was gonna clear it. And he cleared it. That shit was crazy. <laughs> he didn't think that. He didn't think that. He didn't he think that shit was so going. athletic for no reason. Yeah, bro. For no reason. It was just adrenaline anger. <laughs> yeah, man. So shout out to that nigga. Shout out to that nigga that pole vaulted the, the judge. That That's shit was funny, crazy. Though. That's just crazy. Yeah. But I ain't got nothing else, man. I hope everybody had a new year. Uh, you know, be safe out there. Um, I hope everybody gets what they want out of this year. Um, it's going to be a long year, man. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. man. So make sure. a good one. Yeah, should be a very, very good. Um, Like, subscribe, comment, man. Peace. We out.